Well, folks, it's that time where I take a moment to kind of reflect on everything that went down during the first half of a season of a show. And in this particular instance, we're talking season seven of Sisters. We have a time skip of three months. We have a new director. We have new writers, a completely new vibe. But the question is, how did the writers do? How would season 7A stack up to the rest of the series? Now, if you've been paying attention to my reviews ever since January 3rd to where we are now, you'll know that for the most part, I truly enjoyed season 7A. I think the new writers are doing a bang up job. They're cooking. I mean, things started off a bit controversial. I'll never forget when that first episode dropped January 3rd. And for a couple of days, I just saw endless comments of people saying, oh, these new writers ruined the show. Karen's baby bump sucks. They should be fired. Oh, that whole thing with uh, Danny getting attacked was a nightmare. That was stupid. And then the list went on. And I made a lengthy post on social media sharing my thoughts about how this is ridiculous. People have for years been saying Tyler needs to hire writers. Tyler needs to do this. Tyler needs to do that. And when he finally does what these people have been nagging him about, you want to complain after one freaking episode. And I just had to speak out saying, look, everybody is free to share their opinion. I'm not saying people can't have their opinion. But what made it so annoying and the whining and the nagging is that a majority of the people I personally seen in the comment section of my videos for years on Twitter and whatnot and Instagram comments, they've all said the same thing. The, the show is slow. The pacing is slow. The characters are repetitive. Tyler needs to do this. And when things finally change after one episode, you say you want to quit the show. And that's when I'm like, look, let the writers cook. They have a lot of ground to cover because this isn't like the, uh, you know, a pilot season of a show that's been handed over to a bunch of writers for season two. They got the reins for a show that's been on since 2019 for what? About five years, almost. It's going to take some time for them to adjust. They had that first episode. I gave them grace. I'm like, look, it's the pilot. It's almost like we're getting a new pilot of sisters because the show is not going to look the same that as it did for the last six seasons. And I think they did a great job based on the mess that they had to kind of clean up. Like that random cliffhanger ending of Danny getting attacked. So let me just say from that post, it's been pretty cool to see that um, the, a lot of the writers liked it, uh, reposted it and responded to it because they appreciated the positive, you know, feedback. And it's the fact that, yeah, I mean, I'm not going to show what uh, I'm not going to throw a show away because I didn't like one episode. Let's see what they're going to do. And it's funny because when episode two came on, people were like, OK, OK, OK. And yeah, let me put it this way. Have I agreed with every single decision that new writers have made? No, no, I haven't. But for the most part, I think they are doing a fantastic job. And if any of them are listening to this video at some point, I would like to interview the writers just to get some thoughts on it. And I know people are like, well, Jeremy, they do their Twitter spaces all the time. And uh, they've interviewed with other content creators and bloggers. When do you want to do it? I, number one, I did not want to interview anybody until the mid season was over because I didn't want to ask any questions that I couldn't get answers for. Like, let's say if it was like February, um, episode seven that aired Valentine's day, I didn't want to ask a question. It's like, ah, just, you got to wait a couple more episodes, Jeremy, to find out like, no, let me just watch the episodes because I don't want to talk to the writers until I have a solid grasp on their vision of the show. And true. We still have the back half of the season to go, but it's like I said before, Lord willing, I am in my house before the show returns on May 22nd. Now, they kept telling me the house is going to be ready late April, early May. So if everything aligns perfectly, I should be in my place by the time sh the show comes back. And once I got a, you know my office and everything and better Internet, because not to get to I got the bill. I got the automatic payment on my credit card for the last month of internet and it was through the roof because of data tokens. And I'm like, I got to get out of here to get better internet. Cause it's ridiculous. So first of all, let me just say thank you all for watching my videos because without it, I wouldn't know how I would pay the bill. But, um, yeah, once I get better connection, I hate doing live streams and then like 30, 40 minutes in, Oh, it's buffering. It's frozen. Hopefully when I move again, only 10 minutes where I live now, I should have better everything and we can move forward because I want a better background than my, tiny little bedroom where I can barely get any, you know, space to really work with. So 
writers, if you're listening, I do hope to interview you in the near future. So I think that this season, it was a bit jarring to see Karen's dynamic where I was giving her the side eye, but she was kind of changing for the better during the back half of season six, but then she went right back to her old self. I like the fact that we got a lot. The main positive I have for season seven is that the writers were recapturing season one vibes. The girls hung out a lot more like they used to. We got a a lot of different dynamics where we rarely saw Sabrina and Karen have scenes together, but we had at least three different occasions like at the hospital, at the bank, just to name a couple off the top of my head. You know, Fatima moving forward with law school, that's great. That way she just isn't hanging on to Zach and, you know, supporting him. We actually get to see her pursue her dreams. Um, New Jordan, I'm still not used to the actor, but that's not his fault. It's just that even though the old Jordan, we only had him for like three or four episodes. It just was a drastic shift because remember, there was no hiatus between six and seven, uh, season six and seven. We literally got out of one car and jumped right into the other the next Wednesday. And that time skip was a lot to take in. So I honestly, I think Jordan, I don't, I don't really feel the chemistry with Andy, but when Jordan does stuff on his own, like when he interacts with um, Ethan in this recent episode and whatnot, I think I like him more in those scenes as opposed to when he's being all, you know, romantic and stuff with Andy, because it's kind of like, eh, but that's just me. I wasn't one of the people that said, oh, the new Jordan can't act and whatnot. I'm like, it's only one episode. Give the man time to cook. Yeah. Um, when it comes to Zach, I got to say this, <laughs> this is definitely recapturing season one vibes because I was not a huge fan of Zach for a majority of season 7A. I wasn't. This takes me back to season one where I really didn't like his character until like towards the end of the season. And I did like his scenes with Danny back in season one. But yeah, this is definitely season one vibes. The only difference is there's no Jasmine. If the new writers want to, you know, appeal to me, they will put Jasmine back in the show, which my fan service aside, I think Jasmine actually makes sense with all the Gary stuff, you know, going around. So that's just me. But um, when it comes down to Gary, I think Cheeto, this is probably my favorite season. I even tweeted at him a week or so ago and he liked it (laughs) i'm glad because i i don't think i've ever interacted with him on social media before but yeah i'm giving credit where credit is due i really like gary this um season yeah he's crazy a psychopath and whatnot demented but the acting is what sells it for me and i remember the flack i was getting when i said i liked hayden better than zach this season because he's a better written character I feel like Tamara came out of nowhere. I mean, but fine as she is, I don't care. But, you know, him showing his worth as an attorney, I like that. And then the fact that we have the character of Marie, who's definitely keeping Andy on her toes, I think is a great addition as well. Oh, yeah. Another thing I want to give props to, and I said this multiple times already uh, over the past couple months. The casting crew did a great job selecting the actors to play the more minor roles in the season. Uh, Paige, who works at the bank with Sabrina Hudson, who's kind of like um, Gary's go- uh, gopher at the office. Um, Marie, the new client at the law firm. Um, I know I'm forgetting some people, but I just wanted to praise those characters because even though they aren't like a tier, they're more like B C tier characters, give or take. I think those actors did a great job portraying the roles they were supposed to do. Some of them are supposed to be annoying and nagging. Others are supposed to be larger than life. Others are supposed to be, you know, just the character you don't trust. I mean, even though that uh, Ethan guy, the Ethan Kerr, he just showed up. I don't want to give too much praise to him yet because he's only had the one scene with Jordan and on the phone with Hudson. But I think he did a good job as well. I'll I'll wait until the back half of the season. Then I'll elaborate more. But I just want to say that the new characters added in this season were great. Grayson with Maurice. I don't have much to say about Grayson because he just kind of showed up. I think most of what I have to say is kind of negative, not against the actor, the character, the fact that you meet Maurice on his fixation page, but then it's like, well, yeah, I don't want to be with somebody who does that kind of thing. It's like, but that's how you met him. But Maurice, I do like his character like I did in season one because 
he isn't he doesn't have that much of a prominent role so we're not giving that character shoved down our throat with the vulgar dialogue and stuff he he felt more tamed as opposed to being set free where he just says and does whatever so i do like maurice a lot more than i did in the past several seasons um yes preston and calvin are missed but part of me wants to part of me wanted to see what the new writers would do with those characters because i feel like they would actually give them depth and stuff but i said this last season i'm trinity love the guy but and anthony great actor as well but I, they, they don't need to be around. If Tyler is introducing these new love interests and we constantly see Preston just dealing with the stuff that Danny was putting him through and Calvin always had to deal with the uncertainty of Sabrina, not to mention his jealousy, there was no reason for them to stick around. But like I said, part of me wanted to see what the new writers, again, if I do interview them, those are some of the questions I would ask. Like, theoretically speaking, if you did keep Calvin around, if you did keep Preston around, what would you have done with those characters? And even though Aaron just only showed up for one scene when he was talking to Pam in the car, we do know he's going to be in the back half of the season. It's kind of like, I'd rather see characters utilized properly. Like on assisted living, you got a group of people that live at the assisted living facility, but they aren't in every single episode. When Unless they need like a group shot, like let's say there's a party or something, all the characters are there, but... The characters on screen are there for a purpose, not to eat up screen time, but because their characters actually matter to the plot of an episode. So yeah, I do miss those uh, characters and actors, but they don't feel like they were necessary. I do know a lot of people like, oh, I hate these new love interests, Jordan, Tony, and Rich. No, 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 no. Um, I like them for the most part. It's just that I still don't like how like Tony's relationship with Danny started because she was with Preston at the time. But hey, it's just the fact that we're kind of seeing some karma there. The surprise of the kids and then the uh, ex-wife or wife who's showing up soon. Um, Sabrina's baby fever just kind of came out of nowhere. But I guess it's something for her character to do. I did like that she had more of a backbone during certain scenes of the season as well. Um, Rich loved Monty in this role a lot more than Bill on Bruh. So there's that. Andy, I feel, uh, is taking more of a confident role in bringing it down Gary, but it is kind of taxing to see how sometimes she's just written to be so meek and unsure about herself. So the likes of a Fatima or someone else can come across as badass, which I think is a shame. Let me see here. I'm looking at the notes. I think I've covered dang near almost. Oh, Danny's. Oh, wow. I got to say, this is the best of Danny. I've seen the therapy journey. I love it. Um, Nothing negative, really, to say about Danny. No, I can't believe it. But yeah, I've actually really enjoyed Danny this uh, season so far. Let's see, I've already talked about Karen. Oh yeah, I love Pam's journey as an entrepreneur. Roots to riches, I love that. Yeah, and Michael, even though we've only seen him twice, is good that he, you know, Zach has full custody. And now he's dealing with the responsibility and weight of being a full-time parent. So there's that. Not much to say about the DNA stuff. I've already talked about that like a thousand times. I don't care. I'm just glad we're finally moving uh, forward with the storyline. Um, I think one of my favorite elements of the season is the fact that the new writers have brought back surprise characters who we haven't seen for a while. Like, oh, I didn't, oh, I didn't know Tamara was coming back. I didn't know Miss Lisa was coming back. That's the thing. I mean, there were times where I predicted stuff on, you know, completely accurate, but other times the writers would twist and turn certain things where I'm like, if I'm kind of caught off guard, I liked it because not everything is a thousand percent percent predictable for me. It keeps me on my toes and eager to see where the story is going to go next. Poor Penelope didn't need to go out the way she did. Um, I'm going to miss Sal. Definitely a great actress who, I mean, when she came into the series last season, I was instantly taken aback by how good she was, but mainly in the first episode of this season uh, but no, I think what was the episode? Was it season? No, yeah, season seven, episode two at the beginning where she was in the elevator with Gary. That's where I'm like, yo, I think I'm in love. And I don't mean like I'm crushing, crushing on Sal, but I mean like I love with the way she emotes. Definitely great. Uh, yeah. So I feel like I can keep going, but I, I, I'll just sum it up like this. I think the writers are doing a great job. I am intrigued to see what the back half of the season is going to look like. And if I'm not mistaken, haven't I given this season like four to five, ten out of tens, which 
when you think about it, this this season is definitely on track to becoming my favorite one of the entire series. But let's not be fooled now. Just because the first half, in my opinion, was great, that doesn't mean that the ball can't be dropped when the show comes back. And I hope it does not. I hope that this show continues to do well during season seven and beyond because by the time we get to episode 22 this may indeed be my new favorite season of the show which will dethrone season two or one depending on my mood but yeah i think consistently this show has had better pacing better dialogue better just you know direction and i like it so with that being said let me know your thoughts on season 7a like and subscribe and i'll catch you in the next video